Welcome back everybody to the Denver Broncos franchise on Madden 20. Today we're going to be recapping the fifth offseason of the series that was streamed last weekend. You can watch the two and a half hour stream, but I'll recap it all today as we prepare for year six in the series. I felt pretty good going into this offseason after our run to the AFC title game. The main things I was thinking about going into the offseason was that I had to make sure I set aside future cap space for Taquan Layton's upcoming extension, and I really had a lot of thoughts about the tight end position and who could possibly be the starter next year if I want somebody who is a better blocker. I've talked about for a while that I was going to let Noah Fant and Centarius Phillips both hit free agency as I thought it would be the most realistic route to go. That didn't mean I couldn't try to bring them back. In the Super Bowl, the Atlanta Falcons emerged victorious 23-17, scoring all of their points in the fourth quarter and overtime. The Bengals blow a 17-0 lead, and the Falcons, led by rookie quarterback Prescott Pemberton III, are the newest champions of the series. By the way, they're on our schedule this coming year. Let's get to the offseason, though. Here are retirements, and I did expect that Trent Williams would now retire, but we got some really good seasons from him. But this opened up left tackle as a very big need. Patrick Peterson also retired, but I was not counting on him being back for next year. For aggression, Curtis Samuel down 9 at age 28, Miles Jack loses 1. 14 points down for Jake Butt, 3 for Miles Starkey at age 27. And a huge surprise here, DeAndre Hopkins down 39 after last year, including 10 to his release rating. He should still be really good, but that's a lot to lose. Darius Slay lost 17. We get to re-signing now and start with John Anderson. We get him on a two-year contract. Chad Moore, backup defensive end, he signs a one-year deal. And Miguel Ramirez. I always start here with backup players just to get those taken care of, but I knew I had a lot of tough decisions to make here for veterans like Slay, David Andrews, and then what do we do when it comes to open free agency and no offense and Terrius Phillips? Well, at this stage, I knew I wanted to bring back David Andrews. I try not to have too much turnover there. We already lost Williams. I didn't want to replace two players. So we do sign David Andrews and try to bring back Darius Slay, but he declines the $12.3 million deal. I really didn't want to go to free agency here and decided that the $16.7 million franchise tag was a better idea rather than hope that he doesn't end up going to another team. Otherwise, from there, I didn't do any more negotiating because I wanted to see what the open market looks like. And I felt pretty good about where things were at after keeping Slay and Andrews. So that left us with around $47 million in cap space. But keep in mind, I didn't want to sign a lot of multi-year contracts because in the future, Taquan Layton will get a big deal and that's going to dramatically affect the salary cap as it has under this CBA and many quarterbacks having their cap numbers skyrocket. And immediately, there was a lot of interest around the league for Centarius Phillips and Noah Fant, and I knew it would take probably way too much to bring them back. I think you could have made the argument that we could trade Samuel and sign Phillips, but after an AFC Championship title run, I really didn't want to have a lot of key changes, especially for players that I've become very used to playing with. I know Slay had some regression, it wasn't as serious as like Hopkins regression, so I still think that we can get some really good play out of our secondary. Dalton Schultz was one player I had considered trading for, but actually was released before free agency. 75 run blocking is really nice, and I want a tight end that can help us in the running game where we were so good a year ago. Now to replace Trent Williams, I first started to negotiate here with Lane Johnson. I wanted a decent bid so that hopefully he would accept after one round. I spent a lot of time going through tight ends and decided to give another offer to Josh Oliver because I still want somebody on the roster that has that good field stretching skill set. He has maybe the best blend of speed and hands out of anybody available. I also wanted to try bringing Stuart McMichael back. 
Then we go to edge rusher, and last year we had a pretty good rotation going, but we are set to lose Ja'Kai Polite, who's going to get a pretty nice contract, so I gave an offer to Rennell Poindexter. Going back to tackle, the chat wanted me to take another look at some of the other options because I do prefer having pass protectors on the outside and then better run blockers in the interior, and so perhaps Deion Dawkins was a better fit for us. I decided to give him a pretty solid offer. Again, I'm hoping that these get accepted after the first try. So we go past stage one into stage two. And the only deal accepted was by Ronell Poindexter, and that was like a 51 point bid, so I was really surprised by that outcome. All right, right back into free agency. Still some great players out there, but Tyron Smith got a big deal to go to Kansas City. Their old line has been a mess for most of the series. Noah Fant is going to Jacksonville on a four year contract. And Centarius Phillips, he will be going to Washington. We will not see either one of them on the schedule this coming season. Royce Freeman's now going to the Ravens with Marcus Duhon, who had been a very good receiver with the Packers. Ja'Kai Polite gets the really big contract. And Hudson Brooks, $50 million to perhaps be the backup quarterback in Buffalo. Another development at quarterback, a lot of teams interested in Cam Newton, including the champion Falcons and the Minnesota Vikings. Carolina just wanted to keep Cam around and everybody else is making that tough. Vaughn Miller, still available, and with our cap space, we had the flexibility to make a lot of one-year offers. So while we don't necessarily need Vaughn Miller, it'd be nice to bring him back and have even more pass rush after he bounced back this season in Atlanta and got the Super Bowl ring. Had to go back to some of the previous players and increase the offers. I did that for pretty much everybody. Dalton Schultz and then Josh Oliver. Just trying to get some deals done. Deion Dawkins, everybody now wants to sign him. So suddenly our bid was not all that competitive. We had to raise it quite significantly. But did end up getting back into first place. Tried to create a bit of a lead here so we could sign a new left tackle. We go back to the tight ends again and use up the remaining cap space to try to make these bids high enough to be accepted. Now with Devontae Freeman moving on, we had a spot open at third running back, so I decided to give an offer to Anthony Hampton. He can catch the football well, he's very athletic, a one-year deal for a solid third running back. You know I can't pass on that. But hey, we gotta go to the draft as well. We have combine results now out, and the top of this class is really, really fun. So it's not the best class to be picking 30th like we are, as Joaquin Ferreira would be set to go way before us. Kalispell standout Daniel Foster, quarterback Lameka Warwick, who ran a 4-3-9. This draft class is now available on PS4. Blackjack did a great job once again. So many interesting players at the top with uh, different skill sets. His draft classes have been uh, incredible for the entire series. But I had definitely thought about a few players I was focused on. JT Granger, 20 year old corner with size, great zone coverage ability. The 40 was a little bit slower, but I still thought the skill set was incredible. Robert Price, excellent route runner. I've been trying to add a great route runner to this team for a long time. I knew that toward the bottom of the first round and top of the second, there were enough players that I liked. So I felt good even though we were picking at 30th in the first round. Also really liked Mike Holmes here at wide receiver, 4'5", 240, 6 foot 3, good physical skill set. I was also still thinking about tight end. I was trying to get Schultz signed along with Oliver on one year deals, but there were a few interesting tight ends in this class. The main thing was trying to find a tight end who had that all-around skill set that could be a future starter. A wide receiver, there were so many great options, whether it's early in the draft or later. This was a deep wideout class, even undrafted talent from Kalispell, Tyrone Houston, and how about Colt Sully? I didn't even see these guys were in the class until the live stream. So I knew I had plenty of options to add receiver competition. Let's go to the next stage now. 
we see that Vaughn Miller will return to the Denver Broncos. Dalton Schultz accepts the deal. We get Josh Oliver, Anthony Hampton, but Deion Dawkins will not be coming to the Broncos. After missing there, I still had to focus on tackle and somebody that could be a starter for this season. And I felt like free agency wasn't that strong anymore, so I wanted to look instead to the trade block. And sure enough, there was one player that really stood out, and that was Simon Robbins of the Dolphins. He's very strong, has solid pass block. I think that he would be a solid starter for us, so I had to try to make a move. And I wanted to see if they had any interest in some of our players that were their top needs. They didn't like the strong safeties very much, but liked our wide receivers. And that's a very weak spot on their roster. So I offered them Arsenio Choice for Robbins, and they took the deal. I thought I may have to throw in a pick, and I definitely would have. But we get a great trade, and now this year's starting left tackle, Simon Robbins. That was a really big deal for us, and I think Robin still has two years under contract. We also had to decide on a fifth-year option, Norman Proctor. I don't think he's been great so far, but his ratings are solid. He's one of our youngest offensive linemen, so I did want to pick up his fifth-year option. Once again returning to free agency, the Vikings end up signing Cam Newton. So they have Brandon Warren, who is still the starter, but now Cam behind him. I guess they can afford it with Warren on his rookie contract, but it was a very surprising move, and it meant that the Panthers needed a new starting quarterback, and they had interest in Sidney Jean Charles, who was on the Vikings, formerly undrafted. He's developed a little bit in the series. Let's go on to the next stage. Sid goes to the Panthers. And I really wanted to see if they would stick with him as a starter, but I knew they had a top 10 selection still. But we're about to hit the draft, and here's a look at the roster at this stage. After getting Robbins, Schultz, Oliver at tight end, I felt like on offense we just needed some more skill position contributors. And then on defense, I felt really good about our starting 11. So I felt like in this draft we could really target really solid players to potentially trade up for but it would all depend on who would fall as we'd have to move up from number 30. Plenty of options here so I just had to see how things would unfold but JT Granger and Robert Price were the two players that I kept talking about. Number one Jarrett Maxiel off the board 81 overall defensive end he basically has no weaknesses he's a great all-around pass rusher. Next up, the Oakland Raiders select Kenny Kessler. A new quarterback is headed to Oakland. They do not take Lameca Warwick. Eckhart Lindegaard ends up going to the Colts at number three. New England, they get Joaquin Ferreira, 81 overall playmaking safety who tore up the combine. Daniel Foster is going to the Detroit Lions this season. And the Green Bay Packers take Brandon Smith. Two Kalispell players in the top 10 back to back. Too bad we played the NFC North last season. Josh Colbert's off the board next. Philadelphia ends up going Brian Goodson out of Mississippi State. And the Panthers, at number eight overall, select Lameca Warwick as I thought they would. And they have their new starting quarterback. So we have a fun schedule already. We'll play Kenny Kessler in his first game. We get the Falcons in week three. Middle of the year, Lameca Warwick. We finish against the Bengals. We get the Dolphins on the schedule. We take on the entire NFC South and the Ravens. So I think there's a lot to look forward to. Once we got outside of the top 10, I wanted to see what it would take to move up. But remember, I didn't have a third round pick. So that makes it really tough. And with the strength of like the top 50 players, I didn't want to give up our second round pick and only get to take one player early. Alfred Henderson goes to Tennessee. I know he'd be one of the top wide receivers. Next up, Cleveland. They go Chris Bullock out of Texas. And Houston, at number 14, they take Justin Henry. This pushed players down the board that I was hoping to take later. Randy Levine's off the board, and then Jarvis Moon goes to Miami. 
I felt like trading into the late teens or early 20s was definitely possible if the right player was there. Maurice Abrams is off the board. He was one of my favorite tackles in the class. Paul Montgomery goes to the Saints. Pittsburgh at 19. I wanted to trade with them. I didn't think two fourth round picks would be quite enough and sure enough we can't make a trade and they go with Keith Harrell. Not trading with Kansas City in the first round and they select cornerback Mark Glenn from Indiana. The Giants up next end up taking Robert Price and that left me with one player I really liked here in the first round and I still had to think about trading up. But the Vikings go Patrick Williams, Jazeer Days off the board, the Ravens at 24 take Eric Outlaw Sr. But here at 25, I felt like this is where I had to make my move because I wanted JT Granger. Cornerback was a top need for Jacksonville, so I had to make the move now. And I'm lucky the chat brought up that I could trade some future picks because I don't mind trading my future third round pick and throwing in a late pick as well. Ended up having to give up our six and a future three, but we do move up the spots necessary, and we select JT Granger the third, a 20-year-old corner with a perfect skill set for my style of defense, and he has normal development, but 87 zone coverage. Now his man-to-man -man is going to need some work, his press needs some work. But after a year or two of development, I imagine he could be a shutdown corner. I'm glad I made that trade, because the very next pick was Jeff Williams at corner to Seattle. So if I didn't trade up, probably was not getting him. We still had our pick at second round pick 30 as well, so I felt good about getting another solid player. But we finish out the first round, Kalispell defensive end Eric Bryant's off the board, and the champions in Atlanta go John Anderson outside linebacker. At the top of the second round, kind of a fun sequence here. How about Tishon Clifford? That is Marquan Clifford's brother, who has the same speed, he's going to Washington, and that started a run on running backs, four in a row in the second round. Love it. Jaron Williams is going to the Lions, linebacker from Kalispell. Let's go ahead in the second round. Mike Holmes off the board. He likely would have been our pick in the second round, but he didn't make it anywhere near our 30th spot. So when we were on the clock, I felt like I wanted to take Levi Summers. I liked that he had the high bench reps. It looked like he'd have an all-around skill set, and he comes in with 73 overall hidden development. Now his speed is not that great, his run block is actually pretty low, but I think that with the way tight ends develop, especially with him having hidden dev, we can fix some of those ratings and he can be a really good player in the future. Now we had no third round pick, and the Miami Dolphins, another fantastic selection, James Huggins out of Kalispell, and then Austin Jenkins, he's going to Cincinnati, we could possibly see him late in the season. In the fourth round, we had a couple picks to make here, and I felt like addressing wide receiver was something we had to do at least once. Vashawn Wright was still available with second round talent. I also was really intrigued by Baraka Frederic, but ended up trading out of this selection. I felt like with our fourth round pick, our second one not too far away, I could recoup that future three quickly, so it's not missing for next year. So we trade for Seattle's third round pick next year and go 14 picks later and Vashawn Wright is still there. Mid two talent and he's our newest selection. 70 overall, slot archetype, solid underneath route runner, decent speed and hands. He has a skill set similar to Miles Starkey who is actually a free agent right now but Vashawn Wright's gonna have a chance to compete in preseason. In the fifth round, I felt like we could double up at wide receiver. We didn't have a lot of needs, so let's just bring in more talent to battle for those third and fourth receiver spots. Colt Sully from Kalispell. Hidden development, 68 overall, 91 speed, 77 short route running. Definitely has a chance to be a pretty good player. 
Afterwards, I felt like we could make some more interesting picks. We end up taking a fullback later on. Jason King, 76 overall. And some really impressive fullback ratings. Could be one of the best fullbacks in the league on day one. And then, I had scouted a 6.5 combine grade punter. And he was our 7th round selection. Rory Haylett Swinton to the Broncos. Hidden Dev, 73 overall punter with 98 kick power and 79 speed and 73 tackle. There's a lot you could do with him, and after I selected him, Blackjack said his backstory was that he was a rugby player. And you have to keep in mind with these classes, a lot of players have position flexibility. But here were some of the interesting players from this draft class. Jarrett Maxiel went number one. It shouldn't take long for him to become a star. Kenny Kessler has hidden Dev Oakland with a really solid pick here at quarterback. And we'll see if he improves the offense after years with Derek Carr. How about Joaquin Ferreira? 95 speed. 71 man, 77 zone, 80 tackle, 86 hit power. He does everything on defense. Daniel Foster goes to the Lions. He did have hidden dev. Solid day one skills, especially for a man-to-man -man defense. Brandon Smith to the Packers. Great pass protector. 91 strength. 78 overall is really solid. How about Lameka Warwick to the Carolina Panthers? 95 throw power. The accuracies are going to need some work. And he's got terrific speed and 83 break sack. So I'm very excited to see what the Panthers can do with Lameka Warwick. I still can't believe he played so little in the Kalispell Dynasty before declaring as a redshirt sophomore. Alfred Henderson, solid all around. No weaknesses in his game. Robert Price, the best route runner in this class, period. Would have been a solid pick for us. If I had to choose between him and Granger, I still think I would have gone with Granger. Ravens get Eric Outlaw, great speed and hit power. Remember watching him in Kalispell against Arizona State. Phil McGill made it into the first round. He was another really good route runner. Speed was 87. Then there's Tishon Clifford, 97 speed. Low catching, just like Marquan Clifford. Then Cleveland took Mike Holmes, and I would have loved to take him in the second round, but that never happened. James Huggins to Miami. 79 zone coverage on day one with 85 speed. That's really solid. Austin Jenkins was so much fun in the Kalispell series, and I definitely see how he could become a very good player with these skills on day one. But we'll have to see if he ever gets the snaps. And then one of the top kickers was Quinn Morrissey. He ended up being signed by the Buccaneers. And Rick Thomas... He was signed by Buffalo a year ago, but after one year, now he finds himself with the Chargers. If I had the chance last year, I would have signed him, but CPU teams get the first shot at signing undrafted free agents. Harvey Davis was a player I liked. He was a defensive tackle with high finesse moves. He went to Cleveland. Aries Ross Thompson. Now, he ran a really slow 40, but he's got an interesting skill set. He's a good run stopper, 87 tackles, really high, but he also has some pass rush upside. In a hybrid role, I think he'd be really interesting. The Raiders ended up taking a receiver I really liked, Baraka Frederick. Really good spec catch, 89 speed, decent short and medium route running. Would have been a very nice addition for us. Very happy though, getting Vashawn Wright. I also wanted to check on Marquand Clifford because he was a big topic from last off season. How did he fare as a rookie? Well, his catching went up from wherever it was to 62. I want to say it was like 56 or 57. And he had 14 catches last year. He turned that into four touchdowns, which is pretty solid considering the low volume. But that's all he's done so far. For signings going into this preseason, we bring in Sung Ho Kwok from the Kalispell Dynasty. He was a quarterback for Boise State. Now a running back with us. He'll try to fight for that last roster spot. Tyrone Houston. He is signed by the Broncos after being undrafted. 93 speed, 76 deep route running. But he's got to beat out Deion Price really for any opportunity. 
And with Rory Halet Swinton, I went through a number of different positions to see what he could do. And I think you have a couple options. I thought maybe linebacker would be intriguing, but some of these ratings are just a bit too low. Where his overall actually is pretty solid is at fullback. But he has some weaknesses, and we drafted Jason King, so that didn't make a lot of sense. I also didn't think he had the blocking for the tight end role I was looking at. So ultimately, I think that his best spot is at kicker, where possibly he can still make some hits on kickoffs. But here's a look at our roster going into this newest preseason. Change at tight end, change at tackle, and now we're going to see a preseason battle for that third and fourth wide receiver spot. As far as defense goes, we just basically have some new pass rushes for rotation as Vaughn Miller comes back and we sign Poindexter. I think that we were able to do a good job of keeping our team mostly intact. I maybe could have done a little bit better being more aggressive with one-year deals, but I feel like we have a pretty solid team and I can't wait to see some of the preseason competition. So let me know what you thought of the offseason, how do you think I handled it, and what do you think about this team going into the preseason, and who are you most excited to see? Thank you all for watching, I'll see you in the preseason next time, have a great day.